Yeah. So those are two very different ways of uh, of approaching, you know, arranging. One, the Sibelius world. Two, the logic yeah. one. I love the logic <laughs> one. How do you transform the... Uh, you know, the notation to other people that are going to be playing it. Do you transcribe everything that you yeah, do afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I make sure I transcribe it. Um, I, because I like, I think I'm a bit of a control freak. Mm -hmm. um, I like, yeah, I know there's some people that are like, oh, I'm going to send this off to a copyist or an orchestrator to do the, the heavy lifting. But I like, I like being able to go in and be like, I want this violin to play this note as a sforzando and I want this to be crescendo right. here. And this is how I, like, I'll, um, Sometimes I'll get lazy and I won't do bowings, mm -hmm. but most of the time I'll go in and be like, you know, I want them to be playing all up, up bows here. So, because there's, with string quartets, there's this beauty in um, unified strings, like the bowings together, mm -hmm. because it's all of a sudden they're breathing together on a different level. So I love, I love writing that all out. So that's the really time consuming process. Because yeah, you're yeah, just no sitting kidding. there and you're just like, Okay, like this is you know, like, yeah, it all of a sudden it gets to the point where you're just like, I'm so tired. It's fairly unique too. I mean, you hear more and more composers, especially film scores, who really they'll rely on logic to do their tracking, right? And then the samples would come in, and they'll never really, you know, put the pen to the paper, so to speak, and yeah, um, and write it out. And then you really can't share it on as many levels. You can share well, the MIDI data, and that's there's it. There's so many, and I, 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 I cut my teeth for years, um, just being a session musician. So, and I have film composers send me their full scores and be like, can you just multi-track the whole orchestra? And I'd sit there and play it. And I'm like, the violin can't play that note. Like, what are you right. doing? Like, just learn your basic orchestration. <laughs> like, right. so I'd go in and be like, hey man, can you send me the Zibelius file? You, there, you know, that note is red for a reason. <laughs> like, so I'd go and fix it up, re-record it, send it back. And it's like, it's funny because it's like, it, yeah, just like learn the art form a little better. Right. But so yeah, I mean there were so many times that happened. So that that's where I'm like I want I want to make sure that I can that, I don't know I want to make sure that my work has a, a very specific quality to it. Because mm -hmm. when people work with me, they're like, okay, I know this is gonna look good, it's gonna sound good, and it's gonna you know it's the whole the whole package is gonna be really good. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's, I don't know, I think that's really important for any artist. Yeah. You know, control, you know, if, if you're so into the DIY, make sure what you put out is nothing less than stellar. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're really laying a framework so that, you know, when your music really takes off with the, the string quartet and other quartets want to play it. Yeah. Yeah. You can play exactly what you want them to play. Right, exactly. And they'll they'll know and they can look at it and be like, oh, okay. You right. know. And of course, like you, you gotta allow for the fact that musicians are all different. They're gonna have their own sure. little indi individual interpretations. Sure. Which is fine. And you know, I, I I allow for that. And that's the interesting about interesting thing about working with a, a pretty just consistent group of players mm -hmm. like I work with you know Rebecca Chung Felice who's my cellist and Seth May Patterson the viola player and um, Alina Toe and that each of them has a, a very specific strengths and weaknesses and I feel like good classical composers back in the day like any good composer and same thing with in bands right you don't give a crazy rock guitar solo to the guy that can't shred he can barely hold like a rhythm right you know you learn the limitations of your artists so when when it all comes together and there's this synergy it's like it it's you know so it's awesome like with this quartet to like learn the little idiosyncratic styles mm -hmm. they have you know, and be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't write like a ton of sixteenth notes for that player, or oh, they can really milk those the high notes. Right. I don't know. I I think that's awesome. Like when you, you know, I don't know. And when you just play it on keys, there's there's no real heart or real like communication there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. What am I saying? I'm saying that people should learn a little more yeah. <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> arranging so I don't have to play That's weird not a bad scores anymore. To send, for sure. <laughs>